Welcome to Rangers Nation Podcast, talking all things Texas Rangers. Rangers Nation Podcast is a part of Dallas Sports Nation, providing coverage of all your DFW sports teams. Now here's your host, Texas Rangers blogger, the Recliner Nerd. Okay. Okay, guys, everybody that's joining on there. Hey, everybody, this is Ranger Nation Podcast. I'm your host, the Recliner Nerd, and this is a somber but special one. We've got a special guest on here and joining me. Of course, everyone knows I'm friends with Levi Weaver from The Athletic and uh, reached out to him. He was going to reach out. Levi, what's going on, bud? Not too much. We're just hanging in there, dealing with uh, Zoom school this week for the kids. <laughs> so it's not, if I look tired, I'm, that's accurate. <laughs> that happens when you work at home and stay with them. Yeah. But, uh, but Levi and I got a special guest with us today. I, I met uh, a lot of breaking news today that involves Ricky. A lot of you know Ricky Venasco. Uh, one of the top prospects. I had him ranked number six on my prospect list. I know Jamie had him up high at the athletic t- prospect list. Breaking news comes out today. John Daniels informed uh, everyone that Ricky, so you're going to have the ultimate surgery Monday. Yeah, unfortunately, man. I mean, it's a blessing in disguise. I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm just trying to stay positive. But uh, yeah, I'm having uh, having some. Give me yawn on, on Monday, man. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. First of all, Levi, before we get into this. So you got brought up to the al- alternate site. How long ago was that? Uh, I believe almost two months now, a month and a half ago. Now, now, last time you and I talked, you were in Arizona still. COVID was going on. You had stayed in Arizona. Did you go from Arizona to the alternate site? Yes, sir. Me and Cole, uh, me and Cole drove out uh, to Texas together, so. Okay, so, and, and, you know, Levi, I don't know if you know this. I, I, I'm assuming you guys over there, are you playing inter, inter-squad inter games every day? What are y'all doing every day? Yeah, we are, we're playing inter-squad games. Um, we have practices on the, in the, we're in the old stadium, so they put us in the old stadium. So, I mean, our regular throw days, we're just out there uh, in the old stadium. It's turf field now because they turned it into a soccer field. Um, but we're out there throwing, and then our pens – depending on if the home team's home or not, they're either uh, in the old stadium or in the new one. But our games, all of our inner squad games are in the new stadium. So it's, it's pretty sweet. We get to play over there. So so what did you think of it? They, they, I'm assuming, did they bring you over to tour the new one? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it was it was beautiful. I mean, me and my, my mom just got here, actually. So uh, me and Mike took us on a – took her on a tour today of the whole – stadium i mean it's 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 immaculate it's it's really really beautiful so yeah we've been in it a few times it is nice over there i'm glad you guys got to see it levi you got anything you wanted to ask while we're yeah i mean you you know your name was one of those that started to come up quite a bit last year i'm uh, pulled up your numbers here you know between the two levels last year of uh spokane and and hickory you had a what a, a 181 era you struck five guys in in under 50 innings and so there was a lot of you know, eyebrows raised it's like, oh, this kid is he's legit. Um, but really everything that's happened for anybody that hasn't been at the big leagues this year has sort of been under this um, curtain of, of secrecy where, you know, oh, well, he's at the alternate camp and we sort of really on, you know, hey, how, how's Ricky Venasco looking? Um, <laughs> how, how do you feel about your, obviously, you know, having Tommy John surgery sucks, but, but in the last couple of at the all how do you feel about your progress this year as compared to to last year I mean honestly like for me personally this year has been a huge huge development year for me like I've grown so much like as a person as a as a man as a player even more um I mean for me being stuck in Arizona I mean having the time and the personal like one-on-one with the coaches that I've been there I mean have just helped me grow and you know become an even better pitcher than I was last year and then you know obviously getting the blessing to come up here and pitch at the alternate side against the, you know some of the best hitters we have in our organization was just huge and I just it made I don't know it just made everything you know that much better to you know even the worst situation that we got so is there is there one you know I, I'm actually really fascinated about the alternate camp stuff. Every bit of information we get out of there kind of feels a little bit like secret gold because, you know, we don't get to go over there and watch. Um, 
has there been one coach that has been exceptionally sort of helpful? Helpful because it's kind of an all-star cast of, of the minor league coaches over there right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I had to pick one, it would definitely be uh, Teagues in Arizona. I mean, he he stayed with us the whole time. I mean, he didn't he didn't go home. He stuck it out with us, and I mean, he just helped me take my career to the next level. I mean, every day we were talking about something different, like what can we do with this pitch or what does this pitch need to look like to you know match this one. It was just it was every day we were just working on something, and he he he's absolutely an amazing coach and and i i hope the rangers keep him around for a long time that man is he's he's definitely a, a player development guy so stepped into the next thing i was going to ask is you know to hear you say a you know, development year for me i've grown as a person i've grown as a player what what specifically are you mo like you feel like has been the most the area of most growth for you uh, i mean i came in this year you know my big focus was uh, throwing more hole strikes over the, the plate. You know, I mean, commanding my fastball better than I did last year. And then, uh, I mean, obviously developing my changeup more. And then when I got in Arizona and now everything shut down, we changed my grip on my changeup four more times before, you know, I finally, finally found the one that stuck. And, uh, I mean, it's just been a, an immaculate pitch for me. It's a setup. I mean, after my fastball, after my curveball, I mean, I could throw it any time now. It's just, it's just so, it's so good to see. And like, I mean, for me, I'm definitely commanding the zone more. I think I was, I actually got awarded here for the five outings I did throw. I was like, uh, I think it was like 64% strikes in the zone, my strike percentage in the zone. And I think every game was like wow. over 70%. So it was, yeah, it was, it was really, really good to see. And I mean, I was competing very, very well. I think I gave up, I don't know, six, six runs over. 22 innings here, 23 innings almost. So, I mean, it was, it was awesome. I mean, I competed very, very well here. And I mean, I showed and opened up a lot of eyes. So it was good to, you know, good to be here and good to compete finally again. So what did you, I'm not, I'm not trying to take over. So John, at any point, I just jump back. No, in. no, no, go ahead. I've got questions. I'll ask them, go. Okay. Um, when did you, um, when did you know that something was wrong with your elbow? Um, so my last outing, I went, it was my first time I went up and down six times. I mean, I went six innings. Um, and my, my last inning, I got done. I mean, I, my, my velo was fine. The whole game was the highest my, my velo has been since I've been here. I was up to 99. I was, I, uh, I mean, I was fine. I was sitting five to seven, like cruising. And then uh, after the game, I was on the way home. And I was in the car and uh, my forearm started to really tighten up. Like it was almost to where I couldn't even, you know, move my, move my arm. So. I walked in the trainer's room the next day and uh, they diagnosed it as a pronator strain at first because it was in my forearm. It wasn't even close to my UCL, like wasn't even in the spot, you know, remotely close. So I went and saw Meister the first time. Um, we diagnosed it as, I mean, he diagnosed it as a pronator flexor strain again, um, just because it was in my forearm and not my UCL and my UCL felt strong. So, uh, he told uh, he told our trainer, you know, if he, it it keeps you know persisting and you know guys doesn't go away after a couple of weeks, uh, let's just bring him back in the MRI done. So I ended up you know continuously throwing. I didn't have any problems in the throwing program, like like catch. I mean, I threw a couple short boxes. I mean, even that, I didn't really feel anything. And then uh, I ramped it up in the pen, my first pen I had, and then it was just like it wasn't good. Like I didn't, I mean, didn't feel good at all. I mean, at the end of every pitch, it was almost at extension every time. It was just like a, like a bite at the end. It was just really, really uncomfortable for me. So I, I told, uh, told my trainer, I uh, went and got an MRI and I uh, ended up tearing the middle part and the bottom part of my UCL, like very, very <laughs> good. And, uh, I ended up the reason I was having forearm pain was because there was fluid on top of my UCL irritating the muscle of my forearm. Okay. So that's, that's why it was kind of covering up my UCL pain. So, yeah. So when, when, what, what day exactly was the UCL tear diagnosed? Has this been like within the last three or four days or five days? Uh, so I got an MRI on, I believe it was Monday. On Monday, and the results came yeah. back that day. Yeah, we I, I got I literally got the MRI and I went back to uh, Meister's office and you know I was holding the CD in my hand, the CD of faith. 
<laughs> and uh, they told me my results. And my shirt, you know, he's very, very good at what he does. I mean, he's the best yeah. in the business. And he's he was sitting there explaining it all to me. And he was writing it all down on the whiteboard. And he, you know, he didn't tell me that I needed TJ yet. And I was just sitting there. And I was like, you know, if he's explaining all this, he's explaining it all for a reason. And so, but I ended up having, a, I think it was like a grade two on my middle and a grade three on my bottom uh, where it connects to a little bone. So. Look, man, this obviously for, for someone like me, who's gotten to know you, Levi, when I first texted Levi, it was so fun. I said, Hey, I'm going to go on with Ricky in a minute. Do you want to come on? He goes, I'm afraid I'll sit in the corner just with tears in my eyes going, man, this really sucks. So I was like, no, you know, I know he wants to meet you. And like this, your attitude today, Ricky has been unbelievable. I reached out to you as soon as I heard, you said, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm coming back bigger, stronger than ever, all of that. Um, I see the emotion in your face. So obviously I know, look, uh, th this is not what anyone wants to hear. But I tell you what, someone like you, and I heard this from Joe Palumbo when he went through it. I, I heard it from his dad and heard it from Joe. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if half the coaching staff is going to be there when you come out of surgery. I mean, I'm laughing at it. They're going to be protective of Ricky Vanasco because I talked to, to Brett, your, the scout who signed you. Uh, he came on the, the, the podcast a couple weeks ago and he legit told me, he said, I'm going to tell you right now, Ricky Venasco is a number one or number two is what he told me. And he goes, and I, look, I know you're thinking that cause I'm the scout that signed him, but that's the guy I signed. I think he's a number one, number two, his attitude, his work ethic and all of that. So I know that with Levi and me personally, we're going to be pulling for you, bud. Hey, did they have you on any kind of a pitch count when you were you doing going forward from the alternate side? Were they doing any pitch counts, anything like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. They were, I mean, they were very protective of me. I mean, they were, they were watching everything we did. I mean, evidently it's just kind of a free thing. I mean, just, just one thing, you know, one, one time, one pitch, just, I mean, there's nothing really anybody can do about it or nothing anybody could say, you know, it's just, I mean, they do their best. I mean, absolutely for me, I mean, watching, you know, how they handle other guys, it's just, it's just, honestly, it's the luck of the draw, man. I got, I drew, drew the short straw. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, I mean, they, they did everything they could to protect me. And I mean, it's going to, I mean, I play a professional sport and I throw hard. So, I mean, it's just going to happen. Meister, I think, explained it the best from when I had my velo jump uh, a couple of years back. He said, I think the engine just got too big for the chassis. So. <laughs> hey, Ricky, have they put you in touch yet with uh, Keith Comstock? I don't think they have, no, sir. Okay. I was just curious. He's the guy that sort of runs the the uh, rehab department out there in Arizona. I just I hear good things about him and the program that he puts guys through. And I talked to him for the um, I did a story about Rafael Montero, and he's kind of talked me through the process of what he does with guys and how from day one it's you're part of a team. You're rehabbing with other guys. You are rehabbing with guys who are a little further ahead of you in the in the program, and they kind of walk you through like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's normal. You should expect that. And, so I was just, I guess that was less of a question and more of a, like, I think you're probably in good hands. Um, oh yeah. No, I, our, our rehab program. I mean, we, I, I love, I love Kami. He's our, he's our uh, rehab guy down there and we have Lugo Henderson Lugo down there. And I was with him all last year in Spokane. So, I mean, I know I'm in good hands and all the guys that I have that are in rehab now. I mean, I played with most of them last year, honestly. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I know I'm in good hands when I get back there and, I think that's what, like, it's going to keep me going just because I know, like, you know, there's a – just it's a small speed bump, and I can either hit it doing 20 or I can hit it doing 120, so. Who – have there been any players that you've been in touch with, like, as soon as you found out, kind of getting in touch with, like, okay, I know this guy's had it, this guy's had it. Have you reached out to other guys that have been through it before? I mean, I mean, so – that I mean, Spees is here with us, obviously, so um, – and then Lats had a – had something, too. I forget what it was. I don't know. But uh, Spees, I mean, he's he's awesome. He was here. He's talking to me when he found out, and he's just telling me, you know, you can ever always call me. I've been there, and I know how hard it's gonna be on you. And you know, if you ever need someone to just talk to or vent to, and just tell like all the all the stuff that's going on, just you know, you can always call me because I know like I've been there. So, and a lot of a lot of my coaches have reached out and you know said the same thing. So I had a good support group behind me. So I know I'm gonna be all right. Have they given you any sort of, I like, so we know Monday you're having the surgery, right? 
Um, are you going back to Florida after that? Or, I mean, I know there's going to be time where you're not going to have anything. You might be in a cast. Uh, any kind of timeline? When do you head to Arizona? What, how does that work? Anything so, yet? Or do, you, or do you just not know yet? Um, so I have my surgery at 730 on Monday. And then um, uh, I have a checkup on Tuesday. And then I'm flying home for, a, you know, for hopefully like a week and a half. And then I uh, got to go back out for rehab in Arizona. And then yeah. after that, I think they're projecting 14 to 18 months. Okay. So right around, you know, 2021, December. 2021, December. Mm -hmm. Should be full go, healthy and ready to go by then. So by 20, by when, by the start of 2022. And yes, you'll just be, and you're, 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 you're older than you're more mature than uh, going into it. Uh, you, so, you know, we, we know all about the injury of, uh, of uh, Huff when he, nailed you uh <laughs> you're on the mound that you've never had arm troubles before oh no no sir no I've, i mean i've never had anything like this that's why i kind of like you know i've always you know when i'm sore i feel you know something going kind of bugging me i yeah. always talk to the trainers i mean they, they can't help us if we don't you know help them do their job so sure. uh that's why i was like kind of freaking out when i uh, you know found out and i went in immediately the next morning i was like hey like something's wrong like this isn't right. Never felt this before. Not in a good spot. Let's just like figure out why it's barking and, you know, ended up being a little bit more than, I mean, we, we honestly, like we went to the doctor's office and we were expecting to just find out why my forearm was tight, like yeah. what was going on in my forearm. So I think that was like kind of the biggest thing, you know, when we all went in there and that was the, the initial shock was like, Hey, like he gave me the option for a PRP shot, but, um, he said, you know, I recommend surgery. You might as well just do it. And I was like, you know, I'm going to look at you and tell you straight up. Can't put a, can't put a bandaid on a, a blown tire, you know? So, and if it's inevitable, I would rather, you know, go ahead and do it than just, you know, keep putting band-aids on it and just reoccur, you know, following year. So. You got anything else, Levi? No, I'm good. Uh, Ricky, thanks for I giving my podcast so uh thank for whatever small part yeah thanks uh but good to talk to you and try to get to meet you and uh yeah best of luck man thank you levi i appreciate it man we'll be hey, in touch yeah rick and i'll, I'll keep in touch the, now I, have you talked to brett uh campbell have you talked to him yeah i uh, i called him when i found out i mean you know everybody's upset i mean the whole a lot of the coaches and everything you know even even some of our front office guys they were it's just, it's just crushing, man. I mean, you, you, you're around, you're around a kid so long, you know, you help him develop and you help him to get where he's at. I mean, I've had so many, so many great people, you know, that helped me through this organization and, you know, watch over me and, you know, watch me grow into the, the pitcher and person I am, and, you know, help develop me. And so, I mean, when you, when they go down, it, it, it hurts, man. Well, listen, I look there. The only thing that Levi and I can say to you is we're pulling for you. I, I know this is a tough day. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, Hey, your attitude's been amazing. I've seen some text. You texted me back. The attitude's there. I see the emotion, but keep the attitude because that's the attitude you need going into this. Look, this the Rangers are going to get behind you because you're throwing 99 miles an hour and they're going to protect that gold arm on your right, your right arm there going through it. But don't, we're, we're going to keep in touch. I've always promised you I'm going to take you on a hunting trip if you're around the Metroplex here. Uh, and we'll do something like that. But Good luck with the surgery. I'll reach out maybe in a week or two, just kind of see how you're feeling before you get going. But I really appreciate you coming on, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. All right. That's Levi Weaver and Ricky Venasco for the Ranger Nation podcast. Like I say at the end of every one of these or anything I ever write, nerd out. <laughs>